Hey folks, Alcris here with another What Should I Think About When Founding My City video, this time with Rome. Rome, Rome, Rome. Perhaps the mightiest civilization in all of the old world. We've left the best for last, so let's get started with a look at Rome. So Rome doesn't have that much in terms of what they their nation does, but it's really, really quite powerful. Every city gets two training a year. That doesn't seem like much, but that means all here cities are effectively any other civilization's military cities, and your champion cities are like super duper military cities because they get four a year because these two things stack. And then Rome also has plus one fatigue limit for every unit. This basically means every unit can move four pips. So these little pips here are fatigue. Um, Roman units can move one move further, which is pretty amazing. Um, the zealot leader has the same effect, and of course you can have a Roman zealot leader and have five pips. You could even have a swift zealot Roman leader and have six pips, um, which is pretty incredible. Um, Roman units just move further, faster, better, and are produced more quickly. It's very, very hard to defend against Rome uh, if they spawn next to you and it's close by in a multiplayer context. So let's uh, walk through Rome and their families. Uh, also, one quick note, Rome has uh, a unique unit called the Hastatus. It's basically an expensive swordsman. Um, it can fortify and Testudo, but not at the same time. Testudo is basically like a fortify against ranged units that stacks up more quickly in three turns and gives you 20% um, instead of 10% or instead of uh, 5%. So it's, it's very good if you're in some sort of fortified position. Um, but realistically, you probably almost better off building swordsmen unless you're fighting a lot of ranged units in a fixed position um swordsmen are, are just like straight up better um although centurion is good against melee units so that's pretty good but if you've got melee that is infantry that you're fighting with swordsman the swordsman is much better swordsman also cleave um uh, legionary doesn't so it's kind of a niche unit in my opinion all right Let's uh, take a look at the families. So champions, landowners, patrons, and statesmen. So the champions is Rome's military family with that incredible plus two training a year that stacks with the um, Roman uh, base plus two. I'm just gonna found as champions just to, just to show you how much training this city gets just to start out. So it's got eight base, plus two from champions, plus two from Rome, and plus 25% from being the champion's family seat. A normal non-military family is going to just have eight. So the Roman champion's family seat already has 15, almost double a normal city. You see why Rome could just produce military units so much more quickly uh, than any other civilization, especially in the early game when that, that bonus makes such a huge difference. Um, if we improve that ore, it's even going to get better. So champions, um, they have the training. Their cities are tankier with plus 50% def defense. New units start with Steadfast. The family seat gets the glorious 25% um, training boost. Steadfast is basically 25% strength against tribal units, which is really nice. And they get a militia, which is nice, but really nothing to write home about, but maybe it can help you clear your first barb camp. But after that, it just doesn't pack much of a punch. Um, next, we've got landowners. Landowners are Rome's growth city, uh, growth family. They have two growth a year. Rural specialists are built faster, and the seat actually gets two extra citizens to build those rural specialists to automatically have rural specialists available because you've got citizens available. You get a glorious two culture a year per crop resource and the family seat, importantly, can buy tiles, uh, which can make a pretty, pretty incredible family seat. Patrons is the next family uh, for Rome. They have two civics a year um, for every family, two culture per specialist. You can hurry projects with money, which is nice if you're running um, constitution. As a law, so you have decrees in your capital if you want extra orders, or if you have a scholar leader and you can do inquiry in your capital, uh, you can just use that with money if you if you have a patron's capital. Um, you get minus one discontent per cultural event, which is quite nice, and you get a court minister when you're founding, which is handy in case you can marry that court minister. For example, here, if we found patrons, we did not get a female court minister, so we can't marry her. Um, but if we did, we could, uh, and sometimes they have very nice stats. Last, Rome has the statesman family. This is for your order economy family. They get one order per year per city, which is a lot. If you've got three or four statesman families, congrats, 
Statesman Cities, congrats, you've got three or four extra orders. They also get one Civic per year per Family Opinion level. Family Opinion has six levels, starting at Furious and going to Friendly. Cautious is the fourth level. Um, so that means if the family's just meh about you, you've got uh, four Civics here. If you can get them to Pleased or Friendly, it's six Civics here. That's really nice. They have the Project Decree in their family seat, which is an order project. Um, you can basically convert civic production, city civic production into orders, which is quite nice. Um, and you can uh, get treasuries on every city, which is a nice little gold boost. And then you get 400 civics when founding your seat, which is handy for picking up your first law. Generally, all four of these families are quite viable. Um, I think you're always almost almost always going to want champions, although with Rome's city bonus, you might be able to get away with it because all your cities have plus two training, but like more training in cities is always good because more units is always good because Old World at its heart is a military game. And even if you don't go to war, having a strong army can uh, convince other people to not attack you and leave you alone to do your wonder building or or ambition chasing, um, or they can, it can intimidate other people to give you gifts in single player. And uh, in, in multiplayer, I mean, if you don't have an army, you are dead. So uh, training is everything. But yeah, you can you can run all these four. I'd probably stick with champions and pick uh, two of these three. Um, personally, I really like champions, landowners, statesmen. Um, since statesmen for the order economy, landowners for early growth, and champions for um, the training production. You could also do like a patron capital with champions and statesmen. Um, you could try and bring champion lists. I, I don't recommend it, but maybe if you're looking for a peaceful game, you could uh, with like a landowner cap or a patrons cap. I think if you're playing patrons, you probably want them as your capital just so that you can take advantage of uh, decrees in um, capital, which is less important to do a statesman since so you have another source of decrees. But if, in case you do have a scholar leader, having that inquiry in capital can be nice. Uh, since you can hurry it with money, and even even with decree, if you're running decree instead of tyranny, the law, um, then being able to buy orders effectively by hurrying your decree in your capital can be can be quite nice. Um, yeah. All right. Enough preamble. Let's take a look at this city site. So the first thing that jumps out to me is we have three or in range, which to me just screams I don't really care. <laughs> About anything else, I am going to get all three of those ore into my champion seat, and it is going to be the most terrifying unit production city ever. Um, it, yeah, I mean, we can border expand, we'll eventually get the colony law. We already have one in borders, we already have some nice sheep in borders that we'll need to get husbandry to actually be able to improve. Um, might move down one for the for the salt, uh, it doesn't really make a difference because we can. We can put hamlets. I mean, yeah, we, our goal is to get those three ore. They're close enough that we can easily get them. And we probably found champions here to get that ore. Uh, look, we even got horses. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so there's no landowner resource here, so I'm not tempted to found landowner. Um, yeah. Map two. Um, just one ore <laughs> this time. We have um, wheat. It's kind of in range. Um, we will want to move towards settle it. Doesn't look like we can snag that barley. Um, probably settling here so we can get the elephants and the wheat. So, yeah, um, settling wise, champions is quite viable because you've got some ore. Um, landowners, also quite viable. Patrons, also quite viable. Um, I think really any of these three would be fine. Uh, slightly leaning maybe landowners because you've got some nice wheat, but I could also lean champions because of ore, or if you want to go for a patron's capital play, also viable. Really any of those three I think would be fine. Um, I probably wouldn't found statesmen. I don't really like them as capital, um, especially uh, since you want your capital doing other things uh, than spamming degrees, and I like spamming degrees out of my statesman seat. Um, so yeah, I think champions, landowners, or patrons here. Map three, this looks like a classic landowner start. We've got three wheat. Um, would move to grab all three in, in city radius. And then we'd found there's no ore to be tempting. Um, I feel like founding patrons here, it, it's too good a landowner site. One wheat, sure, you can found patrons. Um, just like one ore, you can found non-champions. 
a three wheat, you, you kind of got to go for landowners here. Up four. Um, some game, some fur, some gold, some more fur, some wheat. Probably fine, I think, as landowners or patrons. I wouldn't found champions here. There's no war. Um, I would probably found one tile up to grab those elephants. Uh, landowner patrons, I think, is totally viable here. And look, a marryable courtier. Uh, we can marry her. It's going to pick random tech and advance the turn to show you how the, the marriage works. Um, we now have a courtier. Um, she's a schemer, so we get from her as our consort. Uh, she gets 2.5. She also remains a courtier, uh, so you're actually double dipping from her science. She gets you 2.5 as the um, consort, as the queen, and then 1.6 as the court minister. So it's really, really good to marry courtiers with early high wisdom in the early game. Um, and since they're courtiers, if you when you have kids, you can actually tutor using uh, them as well. They re retain the ability to tutor even though they are the queen. Um, so that's super powerful. Map five, we got some game and some ore. Um, yeah, it, Rome doesn't have hunters, so I would probably settle towards the game here. Four game will give me a lot of food and ore. Um, probably would go champions. We've got some ore. Always nice to have a strong champion seat with ore. Um, you could also viably go patrons here as well. I don't know that I would go landowners with no crop resources though. 